Hey, I'm KM. It is science fiction week, so today I'm going to be talking about a thriller. Um, this is State of Fear by Michael Crichton, and um, it is an edge of your seed thriller about global warming. I don't know how you even write a thriller about global warming, but this is the author of Jurassic Park, so go figure. Um, I mean, heart pounding the entire time. We're talking people falling down chasms and glaciers and avoiding being struck by lightning, being poisoned, faking deaths, car crashes, uh, the whole bit. Really, really exciting stuff. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep into the premise of the story itself. Um, it's your classic roller coaster, just a really, really incredible thriller. Um, the thing that Crichton does, though, is he writes thrillers that make you think. And uh, there's a character in this story who is a climate change denier, of course. It's a global warming story. Um, but he's not your classic climate change denier. Um, he is actually more intelligent, more calm, better at arguing, and seemingly much more reasonable than anybody in the story who is a proponent of um, global warming and climate change. And uh, so, it's almost a little bit uncomfortable to watch, uh, especially me as a scientist. I'm going, wait, Crichton, are you a climate change denier? Is this uh, what you're trying to do here? And you read the notes from the author, and you find he's not. He actually thinks climate change is happening. Um, but when you look at the graphs, when you look at the data, when you look at the pieces of information this character displays, it really looks like climate change isn't happening. And so now I find myself in a place where I've seen this entire thing presented in two ways. And I've seen it presented in a way that really makes it look like climate change is happening, and I've seen it presented in a way that makes it look like climate change isn't happening. And it just got me thinking that depending on how this data is presented to the public, that's what they're gonna believe. Um, it, it's almost sort of a scary thing going, what is real, what's not, um, what can I trust? Um, a while after reading the book, I, I really reflected on it and looked more into it. I still am pretty confident that climate change is happening, but it made me think about uh, the way we come to the conclusions we do. Um, something I learned when I studied some philosophy and politics is that no matter who you are, and no matter what you believe, there's almost always going to be someone smarter than you who believes the opposite, and someone smarter than them who believes what you do. I don't think a book like this advocates that there's no truth. I'm not less confident in what I believe, necessarily. What it does allow me to do is look at people who disagree and recognize that coming to conclusions and finding truth is murky and difficult and wrought with biases and so many people who have money wrapped up in the truth being one thing or another. It's really difficult. And maybe that's okay. Maybe we can just know that it's difficult and we can all have a little extra mercy with people who disagree with us. Still talk things through because these are important things. But we can have humility about our opinions, and we don't have to tear people down for having put their faith in different pieces of information than we did, uh, even if their reasons don't make any sense to us. So these are my way too deep thoughts on what is honestly just supposed to be a very exciting thriller. <laughs> but um, State of Fear, Michael Crichton, very interesting read. Hey, I'm trying out a little bit of a different filming style. This is just kind of a more live, approach. Let me know what you think of that. If you have any recommendations for me in terms of science fiction or fantasy, books, movies, TV shows, let me know. Uh, like this video if you liked it, and hit subscribe if you want to hear more.